Hey folks, so on my bench today I have the guts out of a Commodore uh, 1084S P1 monitor. So this is a uh, monitor that was uh, available in the PAL region, one of the existing, the original Commodore monitors. And now this came in from a customer um, to repair the RCA board here. So I've actually put a full replacement in here, um, which I'll just show a quick photo of. Um, but the original connector that was here, the solder joints on the bottom had been well, they'd, they'd cracked over, over uh, age and use, uh, and the customer supplied this replacement to uh, fit in place, and also just to clean up the general uh, connectors. Some of the buttons were a little bit sticky, and these dials had a bit of uh, crackliness to them as you, as you turned them. But uh, once I opened it up, I actually found that the internals of this were very dusty. It was obviously a very high hour unit. Uh, there were some scorch marks on the top of the, uh, the case, and I suggested to the customer, just based on the age of this unit, we should probably just do a quick recap and let me give it a full tear down, clean out, test, refurbishment effectively. Um, and that's exactly what I did. So now the board is actually looking terrific. We've got all new capacitors in place, including the, uh, the nice bipolar high voltage one right here. Um, put it back together, went to test it, and the flyback transformer went bang. So what actually happened was it showed a white picture for just a moment and then a lot of popping, a lot of fizzling and the screen went completely dark. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's the dead flyback transformer. Now I'm not entirely sure if this was my doing. Um, it's entirely possible with an original unit like this that uh, just me flipping around this board while I was doing the recap uh, could have caused that to have uh, cracked internally and shorted one of the coils. Uh, I'm not quite sure like I said, it was a very high hour unit, so it's entirely possible that it was just on its way out anyway, and uh, getting the rest of the circuitry back up and running it at its full potential pushed it towards that limit. But I've tested the rest of the board. The power supply circuitry in here is actually outputting the correct high voltage, 128 volt uh, power rail for the, the transformer to convert. Um, but yeah, just need to replace this transformer. So I wasn't originally going to do a video about this because it was just going to be a clean and uh, recap, but since I have to do some actually involved changes here, uh, I will get a video out of it as well. Why not? So yeah, this is the flyback transformer. What it does is it takes the high voltage, and by high voltage I mean it's 128 volts in this case, um, and converts it up to the tens of thousands, I think it's 20 to 30,000 volts that the CRT actually needs to generate the image. Uh, and that lives on the board just in place there. Uh, this little cup goes onto the back of the CRT, the tube itself. And this, oops, this board here, uh, the little pin connector there, it goes onto the back of the tube and that's what actually drives the, uh, the red, the green and the blue cathodes inside the tube. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, like I said, this is, the, this is the part that's gone bad. So what I'll be doing here, I've already removed this from the board, obviously. What I need to do now is get the remainder of this out of the neck board here. So this is the nine pin, I think it's a nine or it might be a 10. No, that's an eight pin connector um, from the neck board here. So I can remove this one wire there. And then what I'll do is I've got a new uh, replacement. And yes, this is new. It is not new old stock, it is new. They still make these flyback transformers. Um, but I've got a new unit there. And I also have a replacement for the transistor here. This is the hot or the horizontal output transistor. So it's the transistor that drives uh, the, well, the horizontal output of the, of the flyback transformer and ensures that it actually draws at the right uh, the power. And uh, typically the flyback transformer and the hot, the, this transistor actually, they kind of form a suicide pact. And if one goes, the other usually goes. Oftentimes the transform blows and it takes the flyback out with it. Um, but sometimes when the flyback goes, this trans transistor goes as well. Um, now I've tested this one and it does actually test fine, but because it is the original, and like I said, they do go out in a suicide pact, that one's possibly not long for the world. So it's a $4 part while we're in here, might as well replace that as well. So I've pulled that out, 
Got the board, but yeah, let's uh, let's dive into this fella and take this out. So what I'm actually going to do is take the neck connector off entirely, just so I can get in there and uh, loosen that up a little bit easier. So. So that's our old dead flyback transformer, but we do need to extract this neck connector. So we're gonna have to get this top out so that we can remove this wire, and then this one has another wire that would go in place of it. the same way. Yep. There it goes. All right. So now, how is that wire connected? That is, looks like it's just held in there through force. So we should just be able to pry that loose. Let's get underneath the, with the tip of the fine pointer tweezers. Bend that up, and there comes the wire. Great. Alrighty. So, let's move that off to the side for now. Let's get our new one out. Alrighty, so, the wires are actually significantly longer, but this is the one that we're looking for here. It looks like we're going to need to strip a little bit more off that. Cool. Okay, now the wire went up through here to there, and then you went in through like that. And then that little bit of metal there. Bent down to clamp. Like that. Whoop, obviously a little bit better than that. Well, how about, let's bend that tab down first. And then hopefully when we push this, the, uh, the wire in, actually, that's, that's how it should actually probably work. That would be in like there. And this would go on like that. And then when you press the wire in, so we're gonna have to clip off just a touch of that length. When you press the wire in, it would uh, only go in once and not come back out. So let's feed that in. Yep, beautiful. There we go all the way in and that is nice and secure now and then yeah the more you t pull on that the tighter it would actually get with the spring kind of digging into the wires a bit more so it's uh, actually really ingenious okay and that is that so now let's get all this junk out of the way and let's bring in the main board so before we go any further, let's pop this new hot in. So that's the one that went there, and this is the new replacement. It's not exactly the same part, it's not a D1577, it is the BU508A, but it is a like-for-like -like replacement, so we should just be able to pop that right in there. Now this actually had a heat sink that went along with it, so need to actually install that at the same time. So let's pop that in there and it had a little bracket, a little spring clip. 
that holds it in place. And that will actually give us the right, correct height. Here's a pro tip for you. Clean off your flux before you clip the leads. That way you won't be struggling with your Q-tip tearing over these uh, sharp points. You should just be able to quickly in between. And then when you're done, you can come through and clip off the excess. Like that. Okay, now let's get the uh, the flyback in. Let's bring that up gently. Let's align these pins. Let's push that all the way in. And let's begin soldering. So I'm just going to do one of these pins here. Gonna heat that up really nicely. Start flooding it, and then I'm just gonna push that up the rest of the way, and use that to mechanically lock that in while I do the other ones. Okay, and that will hopefully, along with the, <clears throat> along with the, uh, the solder terminals, that should uh, give us enough mechanical strength to not uh, have any issues in the future. So I'll let, give that a second to set up. Alrighty, and that is ready to go back on. Okay, so. What I'll do is I'll uh, pick all this back up and get the uh, the base and the actual tube here uh, and hook it in. Okay, so I've got this back on the bench uh, with the tube in place and the board partially slid into the, uh, the carrier here. Now I just need to hook up the last couple of connectors from the actual uh, tube itself. So this is the degauss coil that goes into a couple of pins there. There's also the ground leads. One of these goes onto the board over here near the, the other side of the flyback. It goes in there. And this one goes into the neck board. There's a pin right there. And that goes into her. And there is the color controls here. So this the four pin connector goes at the front here and it can only go in one way because the red pin here is a little bit further from the others and then there is the power LED which goes it's a little orange and black lead here a little two pin connector and that goes to a connector just underneath here right there so now we can slide this in a little bit farther now we just need to make sure as well, there's a little wire clip on the front here that these wires need to go into just to keep them controlled and out of the way. And then when this is back far enough, <clears throat> we can get the degauss coil in. There we go. Okay, now this is the tricky part because we need to route these wires under there and get this neck board plug into the back there okay now we hook up the suction cup for the high voltage now i'm just going to route that over the top here and now i've got a little bit of dielectric grease on here at the moment um, so that's just to stop any sparking or arcing from the uh the internal traces 
I guess, uh, to the outside. Um, it's, yeah, I can actually pop a, little, pop a little bit more on there. I've put that on there while I was doing the other one after cleaning off the original group. Uh, and obviously it's, I've lost a little bit while I was uh, taking off that original tube. So I'll just spread that over there gently. Doesn't need to be heaps. And I did mention that it is uh, dielectric grease, so it is non-conductive. And I use this Permatex brand that I just got at a local um, uh, auto parts store. Um, I do know that some uh, tube manufacturers recommend a specific type of grease, but it's uh, nearly impossible to get in Australia, so well, I did not bother. And then let's pop that down there and put the suction cup down. And that should form a nice seal with that grease, making it airtight. Yeah, that does not want to come off anymore. Great. Okay. So that is our install done. Now what we can do is give it some power and test it out. Make sure that board's all the way to the front there. Beautiful, okay. So I'm just gonna power this up, nothing connected, uh, no signal, just to see if we get anything. And I'm going to need to get some stuff out of the way of this cable. I'm going to need to uh, do some adjustments to the, uh, the focus and the various uh, dials, the focus and the screen dials to um, get that new flyback transformer dialed in for this tube. Okay, so we're live. I'm not gonna touch anything in there anymore. Let's uh, just get you reconfigured so that you might be able to actually see what I'm doing. Hopefully that's a good enough angle. Here goes nothing. Ooh. Apparently got nothing. And that high pitched whine usually means the flyback transformer is dead. And that's not good. Okay, I think this monitor is going to be the death of me <laughs> because this was just <laughs> meant to be a simple change and it ended up being a recap, which was fine. And then the flyback has died since then. We've replaced the flyback. I'm getting a great picture out of it now. I figured out what was actually the problem with the hot, the uh, horizontal output transistor. So I've got the old one here, the D1577. And I said that with this one, when I tried it up, it was giving me that buzzing there. And I figured out what the actual problem was. It is that this is in a plastic package and the one that I got is in a metal package and it was actually shorting. So what I've got here is just a packet of, these are for TO220 transistors. They're just um, little, little heat insulation sleeves. And I've, you can see it there, I've just stacked up a few and insulated that from the heatsink to give that um, well insulation. And now that is working absolutely perfectly and I'm, I'm much more confident with um, having this one out, having the, the brand new part in. Um, I've double, triple checked, that is actually the recommended part for this board um, in the Philips variant. Uh, it's actually, that's the actual part number that's on the Philips schematic. So. I'm fine with using that. It just needed that little bit of insulation and it's got a pretty decent spring uh, there. So those aren't going anywhere. To be triple sure, uh, I actually, I didn't glue them, but I used some heat sink uh, compound, uh, this stuff. And there's some Munich heat, silicon heat transfer, not necessarily for heat transfer, but just to give a little bit of liquid courage between the, uh, the layers there. Cause I am kind of stacking a bunch of these smaller ones up. So it just kind of sticks those together. Um, so that they stay in place. But once I got all that back together, um, put it together, got it all calibrated, 
everything's fine except the dial at the back here for the horizontal width is doing nothing. <sighs> so uh, I've spent the evening troubleshooting that, tracing that back through the circuit and I traced it back on the main board here to a short in this area. So the horizontal output, the, this, this one here, this dial, traces all the way back through here and comes into this area here. And the, this is the uh, horizontal output capacitor. Uh, that was the old bipolar high frequency capacitor there. And this here was actually shorted to ground across that capacitor. And I've tracked it down to this transistor here, 7526, which ended up being a BD-826 uh, and just confirmed that by uh, popping it in my little thingometer meter here. There we go. Giving it a test. And it's actually showing up as two resistors. Hmm. So that's not good. And the uh, the shot to ground is across this one that's actually registering as 1.26 ohms. And I can actually verify that just with my, my multimeter here. So if I pop that into ohms. And then I can just do this and test between these two leads. So that's the, uh, yep, and there we go, 2.2 ohms. So that's the um, emitter and collector. So there should definitely be not 2.2 ohms between the uh, the uh, emitter and collector. So yeah, I'm going to have to see about ordering a replacement of this or a alternative because I'm not even entirely sure this is available any longer. Um, but as soon as I pulled this out, the circuitry stopped having that short to ground and everything looked a bit better. But I don't want to run it up without this in place. I'm not quite sure what the um, purpose of it is. So. I'd rather just replace it. Um, yeah. Oh, and I just wanted to show what it actually should show up as. So I've just got my little tub of PMP trans transistors. I don't have anything in TO2 forever. Let's just grab any one of these guys. I'll pop it in the same. Let's grab one without paper on it and pop it in the same slot. So it should show up like that. It should actually say it is a PNP transistor. Tell me which pins are the base, the collector and the emitter. Uh, and again, it's just shown up as a pair of resistors. So yeah, dead transistor. And that was stopping the horizontal because when that entire circuit is grounded, it doesn't matter what, uh, resistance you change this uh, potentiometer to, it's always going to be reference to ground and not actually give you any of that adjustment. So yeah, I'll have to get a replacement for that and keep going. Alrighty, I am back with the Commodore 1084 SP1 monitor uh, and well China's come through with their new old stock replacements. So these are the BD-826. This is the original out of this unit and this is the uh, one of the replacements. Oh, there we go. BD-826. So these are brand new. Uh, like I said, they're probably new old stock uh, as these are obsolete and they don't make them anymore. But uh, just as a refresher, I know it'll probably be in the video just a second ago, but let's pop this in here for my own edification. This is the one that we just pulled out. And it is still showing up just as a uh, pair of resistors, but uh, popping in the brand new unit here, this is how it should be showing up. PNP transistor. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, I've already installed one in there. And I will just move this back out of the way. Don't even know how this is going to show up, but uh, yeah, let's um, flick that on. We should be getting, if I actually turn my Commodore on. Picture. Oh, it's unplugged.
And there it is. And we can indeed use, uh, it looks terrible on this, but uh, the horizontal is working perfectly. So now all I have to do is just uh, tweak all of the different um, calibration pots. So the, the blue green drive, the red colors, is the tilts and the phases and all the different uh, adjustment pots uh, to get this picture perfect. But I'm going to use the test build uh, program, which is available on the website. And I'll link it in the doobly-doo. Um, which uh, allows the Commodore to actually output like crosshatch patterns and color, color bars and things like that. Uh, and I'll probably just at the moment be flashing up a bunch of images after I've done that of uh, the outputs. And yeah, this should be the completed monitor. Nothing else uh, should be wrong with it now. So it's had a full recap. The flyback's been replaced. And now one of the uh, transformers, uh, sorry, transistors that control the horizontal has been replaced as well. Uh, everything has been fully cleaned in and out of here and it was absolutely filthy when I got it and I'll show you some pictures of that as well. Um, all the potentiometers have been completely cleaned using some contact cleaner and they all now uh, operate without uh, jittering. So the, the, the ones on the back definitely when you turned them you could see the, the picture jumping about um, and they're all perfectly linear and, and beautiful now and including the ones on the front as well. And all these switches uh, to switch between RGBI and uh, composite and whatnot uh, all work smoothly. So yeah, job done. Uh, get this back to the customer as soon as the Sydney lockdown finishes uh, and I'm sure he's going to be absolutely happy as Larry. So thanks for watching.